today we're going to be talking about geometric sequences. And a geometric sequence has a constant ratio as opposed to a common difference between consecutive terms. So it's some ratio, it's some multiplier. So to get from 81 to 27, what do we multiply by? We multiply by one third. And again, one third. And again, one third. So that's consistent. Kind of how I did with the arithmetic. Okay, so let's look at how we did this so we can get our rule. Our first term was 81. To get to our second term, we took the 81 and we multiplied by that common ratio of one third. To get to our third term, we took 81 and we multiplied by one third one two times. Which really means 81 times one third squared. To get to our fourth term, which was one, two, three, four. To get to that term, we took 81 and we multiplied by one third three times. When I multiply by that three times, again, that's like saying to the third power. So just as I did before, how does our term number compare with that value? Our formula for our nth term is our first term times the common ratio r to the n minus 1 power. Okay, so our rule for our geometric sequence. Okay, and again, I'm not going to give this to you. That's why I explain to you where I get it from. Okay, our nth term is our first term times the common ratio to the n minus 1 power. Okay, writing a rule for the nth term. Okay, let's write out what that formula is. Again, writing out the formula is going to help you guys memorize it. If you don't believe me, I can't help you with that then. Okay, trust me, it's going to help you memorize it. So let's look at this, and then we need to find a sub 11. Let's see if I remember to find that at the end. I don't think I'm going to remember. We'll see. Okay, so a sub 1, first term is 81. What's our common ratio? To get from 81 to 108, I'm going to multiply by the common ratio. So let me do a little side math over here. 81 times the common ratio is going to equal 108. So if you take and you divide 108 divided by 81, is going to get you your common ratio. So if you take the second term divided by the first term, that gets us our common ratio. And that happens to be four thirds. Okay, now I need to write a rule for the nth term. Okay, so a sub 11. Wait, no, I have my rule for the nth term. Right now, this is nth term, not first term. Go with the program. Now I need to find a sub 11. So now all you have to do is plug in 11 for n. Okay, so 81. 4 thirds to the 11 minus 1 power, a sub 11, oh, I did that in my calculator, 1438.38, okay, I wonder if there's a decimal approximation to that, or, I'm sorry, that is decimal right now, um, I wonder if there's a fraction having it with that, I don't think so, I think that'd be a pretty big fraction, okay, went off on a tangent. Next example, find the rule for the nth term. One term, our second term, is 6, and the common ratio is 3. So, yes, I realize this one is a fairly easy example, but I want us to be able to use this formula. So I'm going to show you guys how to use that formula. The value of the term is 6. The first term, we don't know yet. We know our common ratio is 3. And this was to the n, our n was 2 because this was the second term minus 1. 
So now simplifying, we have 3, a sub 1, a sub 1 ends up being 2. Yes, I know, I realize you guys could have just divided, but what if I don't give you 1 that's so close to a sub 1? Okay, so that's why I did that. So the value for our nth term is equal to our first term times the common ratio of 3 to the n minus 1. Now we can't multiply the 3 and the 2 because the 3 has an exponent to it, and by order of operations we'd have to do that first. Okay, find three geometric means between 3.12 and 49.92. So what that means is 3.12, I have three blanks, one, two, three, and then I have 49.92. Okay, so again, think of this as your first term. Second, third, fourth, fifth term. So the value of our fifth term, 49.92, is our initial term times the common ratio, 1, 2, 3, 4, or n minus 5, I'm sorry, 1 minus 5 times. So when we divide that out, we get 16. And then we take everything to the 1 fourth power, and we get our common ratio is 2. Okay, so then now it's just a matter of using your calculator and taking 3.12 times 2 to get 6.24. Taking and multiplying that by 2 again, we get 12.48. Taking and multiplying by 2 again, we get 24.96. Multiply by 2 again just to make sure you get to that value, and you should. Okay, uh, there is your lesson question. Just one lesson question for today, and please make sure that it's submitted on time.